With Azure AI Search, you can create a custom search engine of your company's documents and connect it to Copilot Studio so your agent can chat with them. Now you might say, why don't we just go over here to the Knowledge tab and upload those files directly? And you can, but unlike the upload file method, Azure AI Search allows you full control over how the documents are indexed. You get to choose the embeddings model, which controls how they're vectorized. You can add custom labels and so much more. Honestly, I just get way better results when I'm using Azure AI Search. In this video, I'm gonna show you the basics of Azure AI Search and how to connect it to Copilot Studio. Now, you might be wondering, what documents are we gonna be chatting with today? Well, I've picked out the YMCA Human Resources Employee Handbook, and you can go look this up online. It's just a really huge policy document with lots of information, and it's gonna be great to chat with because we can ask questions uh, as an employee and get an answer from maybe an HR chatbot, right? Great. Okay, let's head on over into Azure. Now there's three things that we're gonna to have to create in Azure. We'll need to create an Azure AI search resource in order to create our search index. We're gonna need an Azure storage account or blob storage to hold the employee handbook. And we're gonna need an Azure AI Foundry or Azure Open AI resource in order to deploy what's called an embeddings model. We'll learn more about that later. But to get started on creating Azure AI search resources, what you do is you type in AI search in the search bar up here. Then we'll go ahead and click create. We are going to use this resource group, XD Azure AI Search Tutorial. You can create this for yourself too. Um, that's gonna keep everything that we create in Azure neat and organized under the same resource group. Let's pick ourselves a, a service name. I'm gonna pick uh, Azure AI Search and then use the current date. I think that'll make it nice and easy to um, identify. And then we'll pick our pricing tier. Now, if you haven't created one of these before, you can create a free resource, a free AI search resource. Uh, you do only get one of them, and you have 50 megabytes of total storage in there. But after you've used your first one up, um, recommend moving over to basic or standard. Not only do you get more vector quota, more total storage, but you also get access to more features, things like semantic ranking and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna click basic right here. Then I'm gonna click review and create. Then when we create it, here we go. It's gonna go ahead and submit it for deployment. I've skipped ahead because deployment took a couple minutes, but now it's done and you can click on go to resource. And here you can see our Azure AI search resource is now set up. Great, next, next let's move on to creating our storage account. So let's type storage account up in our handy search bar once again and we're gonna create a brand new storage account under the same resource group. Let's call our storage account, let's just call it storage account. We'll use the date so it's easy to identify. And looks like this field can only contain lowercase letters. That's right, okay, lots of rules when you're creating these names. Uh, our primary service that we're gonna use is Azure Blob Storage. And for performance, we'll pick standard. Standard works pretty good. Let's click uh, review and create. And once again, just click that create button and it's gonna deploy the Azure storage account. Skipped ahead once again, no sense in making you watch the deployment, but now I'm gonna click go to resource and we'll check out our storage account. Okay, so this is the storage account overview page. And where we want to go to, I think is data storage and we're gonna click on containers. So container, a container is what is gonna hold our employee handbook file. We're gonna create a brand new container and we're gonna call it uh, CS Human Resources. So Copilot Studio Human Resources. And today we're just gonna put one file in there, the YMCA handbook, but if you want to put multiple documents, multiple human resource documents um, for your organization into it, well, it's important to have a good name. So we'll go and click create and the storage container is created right away. Then we are gonna upload an item. You could add you know, folders here, to kind of make it more organized, but we just wanna upload one file and that's what we're gonna do. And I will click upload. Now that our file is uploaded, let's create our third and final resource, the Azure Open AI resource. 
So type in Azure OpenAI, and we're gonna create a brand new one. We'll pick the same old resource group, Azure AI Search Tutorial. Uh, we have to give this a name, so let's call it um, Azure OpenAI. And the pricing tier, let's pick standard. Okay, go ahead and click next, click next, and then wait for it, wait for it, click create. And after a few minutes, the final deployment is done. We finished deploying Azure OpenAI. So we click the, the button there and then go to the Azure AI Foundry portal. I'm so glad there's no more deployments to do. Once you get to the portal, go to deployments and then click on deploy base model. And we're gonna search for embeddings models right here. So what embeddings models do is they take a document like our employee handbook and they vectorize them, they convert them to vectors so that the Azure AI search index can read them. The one that I'm gonna choose is text embedding three large. All these different embeddings models has different have differences. Uh, I'm not gonna get into them right here, but you can go ahead and look them up. But maybe just as some shorthand, we can say that the three large is the best one available here, 882 is kind of middle of the road, and three is the least good option. So kind of a good, better, best. I'll click confirm, and then I have to give this a name. So I'll give it a little bit of a custom name so I can identify it. And something important to note here is its capacity is 120,000 tokens per minute. So if you have a lot of documents, you know, maybe over 120,000 words or 120,000 tokens, I know those aren't totally interchangeable, but um, that is as fast as this can go. I'll go and click deploy, and it's going to give me my resource. There you go, that was, that was really, really fast. So now we have all of the pieces set up. We need to go back into Azure, we need to go back to AI Search, and we're gonna go and create or configure our index. So I can just click on AI Search, open up our resource that we've created, and then I click on the Import and Vectorize Data button. We want to click on Azure Blob Storage right here because we created a blob storage resource. Then we'll click on RAG because we just wanna process text. And then we're going to pick all of the things that we set up previously. So I've picked storage account, we're gonna pick our storage container. Our file is not in a folder, we just left it in the root of the directory. We will click next. Then on the vectorized text screen, we will pick our Azure OpenAI service. There we go, we've got it out of the list. And then we'll pick our model deployment. So this is our embeddings model once again. We're gonna use API key for authentication type and click next. Don't need to click any on anything on this screen here. We're not gonna vectorize our images or enrich with AI skills, but this is something that you'll want to take a look at as next steps in your, in your learning process. Um, we're also going to schedule this only to happen once, but if this were something where your files were gonna be continuously added to that folder, right, that Azure blob storage folder, you might want to refresh this on a schedule. Here, we're just gonna vectorize them once. And then we go ahead and click create to create our index. Okay, this is exciting. Okay, now we can start searching. Awesome. So I clicked on start search and this took me right into the index. That's great. So I'm gonna just type a question here. I'm gonna say, what is the maternity leave policy for new, I'm gonna say new dads. I'm gonna be really specific. And when I click search, it's gonna search my file and it's going to bring back key places inside of the document that are relevant. And you can see some fun stuff here, right? I mean, you can see the text, you can see um, a score, right? This is the score that shows how the documents were, were ranked. And if you go all the way down here, you can see a bunch of numbers, oh my gosh. Those are the vectors, right? <laughs> Here we go. So now we'll go back to my search resource and just wanna show you where that's located for future, future reference. And the index, well, it's right here under your indexes. Who would have guessed? If something goes wrong with indexing your document, you wanna come over here to the indexer. 
the indexer ingests the file and places it in the index, right? So we've got an indexer and an index. And if we click on our indexer, it's gonna show that we had one file. It took two seconds and it was successful. But if there's a problem and you need to do some troubleshooting, you're gonna find the information that you need right here. It's gonna say fail, it's gonna say failure, it's gonna say why. You go ahead and you correct the problem and then you click on the, the um, reset button and then you click run once again, okay? So if you have a problem, come in here, look at the error message, click reset and run. Now it looks like we've got everything set up here. So we're about to go into to Copilot Studio, but what are we gonna need to, what are we gonna need to connect with Copilot Studio? Well, we're gonna need this URL right here. So here we go, that's our, our URL, our endpoint. And we're also gonna need a key. So we, we're gonna need the primary admin key. So let's keep that in mind as we go on over to Copilot Studio. Okay, so I'm in Copilot Studio, I've created my agent. Let's click Add Knowledge, and then we'll click on Azure AI Search. We're gonna go and set up a brand new connection, and we're gonna use the type Access Key. The first field we need to fill in is the endpoint URL, which is right over here. There we go. And then we're gonna need to fill in the admin key. And I got that key from right here. Great, and when we do that, it should create an index. It should not create an index, it should create a connection, and we're gonna be able to see our index. So this index ends in 254, and if we go over here to our indexes, well, you can see this one also ends in 254, so it's pick the right one. We click Add to Agent, and something that you're gonna notice is that this doesn't take any time to really ready up at all. Um, as soon as it's added, as soon as the connection is added right here to the knowledge, the status is ready and that's because all of the knowledge has already been processed. And the reason that you have to wait when you upload a file is because all of that indexing is happening behind the scenes, right? Makes a lot of sense. So now we've got Azure AI search set up. Let's go ahead and ask our question. What is the maternity leave policy for dads? And that's absolutely the same question that we asked inside of Azure. And we can see here, it's starting to search our knowledge sources. That's great, it's starting to search Azure, Azure AI search. And here we get our answer. So we can see it's based on official sources. It says both new parents, including fathers, are entitled to, to parental leave. We can see some references to the handbook. And here we can see the reference sources. So when we went into Azure and we were typing out our test search query, these were the three spots, three places in the document that it found. That's all I wanted to share with you for today, but there's way more you can learn about Copilot Studio and Azure AI Search. So subscribe to my channel and we'll talk more later. That's it, that's the video.